Um, I'm from the East Bay. You know, I'm from I'm from, from Oakland and, and, and Richmond. And I'm um, in the East Bay. Work trains are are, are, are kind of overhead. They're kind of exterior all the way. You know, in Berkeley, actually, you guys you guys trains are underneath you guys, right? So when you guys go, go, go to downtown Berkeley Work Station, y'all go down the tunnel and you guys catch the train in the tunnel, right? Where I'm from, you know, in, in, in North Oakland and in, in, in Richmond, the board train is always above us. So it's something that we kind of always hear, you know what I'm saying, constantly. You know, even if you're not around, you can still hear that, that faint electronic whistle in the air, you know, at all times. You know, um, in, in San Francisco, it's not like that. You go over to Frisco, you never hear the board because it's underneath your, it's underneath your feet. But I wanted to really establish that, that East Bay environment, though, you know, those sounds and those sights and, and, and the certain things that you kind of take for granted being from here. You know, I really wanted to implement those into the, into the, into the film. How, how I initially got introduced to the, to, to, to the information was I had a, I had a good friend of mine uh, who was also from Oakland, who was at USC when I was there. He was in the law school. And uh, he eventually graduated from, from, from the law school while I was still in film school. Came back up here to work for an attorney named John Burris. How many of you guys know who John Burris is? John Burris is a civil rights attorney here in the Bay Area. Um, and, he, and he worked on the Oscar Grant civil case. And, and, and my friend Ephraim ended up working for, for, for John Burris uh, on the case. And when he realized that, that, that I wanted to make a film about this, he called me up, you know, and, and the first thing he did was ask me to help him organize a video footage. There were lots, lots and lots of videos taken from that bar train that night. And you know, I knew how to, how to, how to you know, work, work with video footage as, a, as an editor. So he had me helping him with that at first. And then from there, I had access to, to all of the public records documents from the trial. You know, the criminal case was, you know, behind this message, this criminal trial was, was, was public. And uh, all the testimonies and all those different things that, that, that happened during the trial, um, you know, you could, I, I could find they were public record. So, so I started with that, started writing the script from there. And Oscar's day was well covered because it was a trial. You know, questions were being asked, different witnesses about everything that happened. And then once I got access to the family, once the family agreed to, 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 to cooperate with us and make it a film, um, I, I, I could ask everybody that, that the Oscar was with at the time. You know, so, so I had both those, both those, you know, both those resources in terms of, in terms of things that pulled from me. What's your name, bro? Marvon. Marvon. Um, one of my questions is, do you think uh, the film will have the same effect if it was made by somebody that wasn't African American? And that's a great, that's a great question. Um, I, I mean, I think, I think that no two people would make the same movie. You know what I mean? I guess I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty proven. And, and, and every filmmaker, you know, every artist, they bring their own perspective. They bring their own perspective to what they do. So, so me bringing my perspective to a film, and this film definitely had my had my perspective in it. You know, um, me being an African American male from the Bay Area it was a big was a big, it was a very large part of my perspective. I mean, that's the lens that I see the world from. So, so if, if somebody, um, if an artist is making this making this story, you know what I'm saying? He had a different background from mine. The, the film would most definitely be different. You know. Not, not to say that one is right and one is wrong, you know what I mean? But it's just, it's just that's kind of how art works. You know, no two people make the same make the same thing. First, just let me introduce myself. I am Cephas Uncle Bobby Johnson, affectionately known to the community as Uncle Bobby. I, I, Oscar Grant was my very first nephew, so we had a very special relationship. And also, Wanda, his mother, is my baby sister. You know, so of course, a big brother love for his little sister was extremely important in the aspect of what happened after Oscar was murdered. But in regards to how the family felt about the film being developed, there's three critical things that happened that made it so important when Ryan shared with us his vision, how we really just felt his, his love and uh, his spirit that helped prompt us to do it because many came before him asking about doing a documentary, doing a film, and we were really hesitant. And, and what happened was, as you know, on January 1st, Oscar was murdered. Right after that, there was a demonization, a criminalization, a demoralization that took place in his character. So it was like he was murdered a second time. Then, of course, through the process of the criminal justice system, we felt as a family we didn't get justice, so he was murdered a third time. But what was really important to us was the love that we had for Oscar and for the world to know who Oscar was to us. So when Ryan approached and shared his vision, it was, like, it was like God answered our prayers. And so we released our spirit and our love to Ryan to share that vision that we wanted everyone to know. And that was how Oscar was loved, that he was a father, that he was a young man working, that he was a young man that had struggles. 
You know, unlike, not unlike many of all the young men that exist today on this planet. And so it was important for us for the world to know who he was as a person to us. His humanity had to come back. So the resurrection of Oscar through the film was so critical important to us. You know, I was called up and I was told that Oscar had been shot. At that time, he hadn't really died, you know, to what we know today as far as being murdered. Um, so my reaction was, of course, um, hope that the injury that he received, that bullet wound in his body, wasn't severe or critical or fatal. But upon him dying, it was extremely painful. It's, it's painful when I think about it right at this moment. So just let me coast through it. But it was extremely painful. It was hurting. Not at that moment in time, God revealed to me what I had done. But at 1240, before Oscar was murdered, he was prompted in my spirit. Now hear me, because this is important for all of you. He was really prompted in my spirit. And it was like God was telling me to text him. So at 1240, I text Oscar, and I said, God loves you, God loves your family, and I love you. And he got that text. And what I'm saying is that when we're prompted in our spirit to reach out to a loved one, to share with them your love for that person, do it. Because we never know that time when their life might be taken from us. So I am so thankful that I responded to my spirit in response to texting Oscar to let them know that I love them. And, and I, I, was, I was at home on Christmas break from, from, uh, from, from LA and I was, I was at Frisco working as a bouncer at this, at this rare. Um, it's like, a, like, like a, something, something I was doing at the time to, to, make, you know, to make money when I was you know, not in school. And I got a call from a, from a friend of mine who was catching a board back in Frisco and he said they shut the trains down, somebody got shot. At, at, you know, at, at the Fruitvale Bar Station. And, and, you know, we didn't know how somebody got shot or, 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 or what happened. You know, and unfortunately, where we from, man, like, like our people, people we come around, people we, people we live around and where we live, people get shot all the time, you know? So, so I, remember, I remember him saying that, and I remember feeling sick later because we started talking about something else, you know what I mean? And then I remember over the next few days, the picture came out of, of I remember seeing a picture and thinking, thinking, damn, you know, that could be my, that could be my cousin, that could be, you know, my, my, my brother, that could be me. And then remember saying he was 22 years old, and I was 22 at the time. And then I remember seeing the footage and I uh, was seeing him moving around, seeing the clothes he was wearing, like some, some clothes I would wear as friends, like my friends, you know, what I mean, I've been to that bar station all the time. Uh, I just got, got, got this, got this sick feeling of it, of it happening to myself or of it happening to somebody that I know, somebody that I love. Um, <clears throat> And I, and I start to ask myself, why, why don't other people feel like that when they, when they, when they, when they watch this? Because not everybody does, you know what I mean? For some reason, um, as human beings, we tend to identify with the people that are most like us. You know, but, 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 but that, 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 same, that same flaw in how we identify with human beings leads to, you know, what happened, what happened to Oscar. That's how we can treat somebody different who's not from our neighborhood. That's how we can treat somebody different who doesn't look like us. That's how we can treat somebody different if we have preconceived notions about them. You know, so, so it was really that, it was really that question in myself that made me want to, you know, maybe, maybe you want to pursue the film, you know.